Hi everybody watching at home, welcome to Reading with Phoenix. Uh, again, today we're going to be reading a book on healing through the human energy field and it's called Hands of Light. There you go, Hands of Light, a guide to healing through the human energy field. And it's written by Barbara Ann Brennan. And as you can see there, it's all about shockers and shit. Um, all right, so let's get to it. I'm gonna start off from the. Should I start from? I'll start from chapter eight because it's kind of interesting. And this is all about the human growth and development in the aura. And I pretty much goes through the different phases of our auric body and the evolution of our auric body, it's right from incarnation through to birth. Through, to, through our babyhood, through the early childhood, through exercise, uh, to sense psychic spaces, that's a bit different, uh, to our latency, through our adolescence, through our adulthood, maturity, through to our death, and then Hyoan on death, whatever that means. So from birth to death and all the stages in between, it explains the changes we experience orically. So uh, this one might actually take a while just to read chapter eight, but it's only, it's only about five pages, so it's not really a whole lot. But, um, so there might be a few parts. So this is part one, potentially. Let's get to it. Chapter eight, human growth and the development of the aura, or in the aura. To span the scope of human experience from birth to death and beyond, I will utilize both psychological and metaphysical traditions as resources. If the metaphysics disturbs you, please take it as a metaphor. It's generally how I take it. Incarnation. The process of incarnation takes a lifetime. It is not something that happens at birth and is then finished. To describe it, we need to use metaphysical terms. Incarnation is organic soul movement in which higher, finer vibrations or soul aspects are continually radiated downward through the final finer auric bodies into the more dense ones, and then finally into the physical body. These successive energies are utilized by the individual in her growth throughout her life. So we use the energy throughout life. Each major stage of life corresponds with new and higher vibrations and the activation of different chakras. Nice. At each stage, new energy and consciousness is thus available to the personality for her expansion. Each stage presents new areas of experience and learning. Seen from this point of view, life is full of exciting discovery and challenge to the soul. So basically as we evolve, finer vibrations are radiated downwards through our body and it unlocks different chakras, allowing us uh, more levels of consciousness and more levels of energy to use for our own expansion and learning. So there you go. Uh, the process of incarnating is directed by the higher self. This life pattern is held in the seventh layer of the aura, the Ketheric template level. So the seventh level of the aura is the Ketheric template, or the uh, yeah Ketheric template level. And I believe in the tree of life, Kether is number one, the the top fruit on the tree, and the first initial vibration is Ketho. So that makes sense. It's the crown as opposed to the kingdom on the tree of life. It's that first. So that's a Ketheric template level. It is a dynamic template which is constantly changing as the individual makes free will choices in the process of living and growing. As growth takes place, the individual opens her ability to sustain higher levels of vibration slash energy slash consciousness coming into and through her vehicles, her auric bodies, and the chakras. Thus, she avails herself of even greater expanded realities as she progresses on her path of life. As each individual progresses, so does the whole of humanity. Each generation is usually able to sustain higher vibrations than the last, so that the whole of humanity moves in its evolutionary plan toward higher vibrations and expanded realities. This principle of progression of the human race is mentioned in many religious texts, such as the Kabbalah, the Bhagavad Gita, the Upanishads, and others. 
everything except the most common one, which is because, you know, the most common one isn't even, I don't even consider it a religious text anymore, Christianity. It's been so bastardized and used by various governments starting from the very beginning. Anyway, it's not about that, it's about this. The incarnation process before conception has been discussed by Madame Blavatsky, which is one of the main chicks in the Golden Dawn, part of the uh, Theosophic Society. Interesting woman. Madame Blavatsky, and more recently by Alice Bailey, Phoebe Bendent, and Eva Perakos. If you want those names. Uh, where are they? Where is it? Hang on a sec. All right, if you want those names, there they are, where are my fingers pointing? Alice Bailey, Phoebe Bendit, and Eva Paracos. If you want to look into them. So yeah, the incarnation process has been discussed by all these people in greater detail. According to Paracos, the incarnating soul meets with her spirit guides to plan the coming lifetime. In this meeting, the soul and the guides consider the task she needs to accomplish in soul growth. What karma needs to be met and dealt with, and the negative belief system she needs to clear through experience. This life work is usually referred to as a person's task. I've read another book different to this called Journey of Souls, which I, I'd like to read some of the stuff from there to you sometime. And that's uh, written by Michael Newson, and it basically, it's, 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 it's this, this guy did clinical hypnotherapy, and he hypnotizes people and he's got this book just full of all these different cases, question for answer, case files of like different subjects he had and clients. And then based on their responses, he, he weaves together a general story of what happens right from conception, incarnation to death and embarkation or debarkation. And it parallels this, you know, where, where this person says, um, you meet with your guide and they help you figure out, you know, what lessons you need to learn, what false belief systems, you know, negative events that have happened in karma, um, tasks that need to be accomplished. And it's all about developing the soul, balancing the soul. And if there's any imbalances, let's say in one life you're abusive, you know, in this other book I read, this person was abusive. They came back in their next life as someone who was abused so that they could develop their empathy and their appreciation of what it's like to be a victim instead of being the aggressor. And stuff like that, it's all about just balancing. Anyway, um, this life work is usually referred to as a person's task. For example, the person may need to develop leadership. That person on entering into physical life will find himself in situations where leadership is a key issue. The circumstances for each person will be entirely different, but the focus will be on leadership. One person may be born into a family with rich leadership heritage, like a long line of respected company presidents or political leaders, whereas another person could be born into a family where leadership is non-existent and leaders are seen as negative authorities right? uh, to put down or re be rebelled against. The person's task is to learn to accept that issue in a balanced and comfortable way. You know, whatever it is you need to develop, where in this case it's leadership. According to Eva Parakos, the amount of counseling a soul has from her guides in determining her future life circumstances uh, depends on her maturity, the amount of counseling she needs. Parents are chosen who will, be, who will provide the needed environmental and physical experience. These choices determine the mixture of energies that will eventually form the physical vehicle in which the soul will incarnate for its task. A mixture of energies. These energies are very precise and equip the soul with exactly what it needs for its task. So your bodies, are, your parents are chosen accordingly as to give you the right vehicle to take you on your towards your destination and your task. These energies are very precise to equip the soul, blah, blah. The soul takes on both a personal task of personal learning, like leadership, and a world task, which entails a gift to the world. The, des the design is so unique that by fulfilling the personal task, one becomes prepared to fulfill the world task. So whatever it is you need to learn personally and develop, like leadership, 
then once you've mastered it or learnt it, you can give it to the world as the gift of your leadership. But you've got to develop that inner skill first if you want to turn it into outer fruit. Is what this is saying. All right, for the example mentioned above on leadership, the individual will need to learn the quality or skill before moving on to a leadership role in her chosen field of work. She may have felt intimidated from a long line of ancestors who were brilliant leaders, or her reaction to that her heritage may be one of holy of... Sorry, I'll read um, Or her reaction to that heritage may be one holy of inspiration to go forward in her own leadership. Each case is different and very personal according to the uniqueness of the soul which has come to learn. The life plan contains many probable realities which allow for wide choices of free will. Interwoven into this life fabric is the action of cause and effect. We create our own reality. This creation emerges from many different parts of our being. Creation is not always easy to understand from a simple cause and effect level, although much of our experience can be understood from that point of view. You literally create what you want. What you want is held in the consciousness, unconsciousness, superconsciousness, and collective consciousness. All these creative forces mix to create experience on many levels of our being as we progress through life. What is termed karma is to me long-term cause and effect. Um, also from many different levels of our being, so over different lifetimes. Thus we create from the personal source and the group source and of course, there are smaller groups within larger groups all adding to the great fabric of creative life experience. From this point of view, it is easy to look at the richness of life with the wonderment of a child. After the planning, the soul enters into a process of slowly losing consciousness of the spirit world. At conception, an energetic link is formed between the soul and the fertilized deck. At this time, an etheric womb is also formed, which protects the incoming soul from any outer influences other than those of the mother. As the body grows inside the mother, the soul slowly begins to feel the drag of it and slowly becomes consciously connected to the body. So gradually, it fades away from the spirit world and while it's in the womb, the etheric womb, and the longer it's in there, the more it starts to sink into the real material world and starting to feel everything, perceive everything. Um, at one point, the soul suddenly is aware of this connection. There is a strong flash of conscious energy down into the forming body. The soul then again loses consciousness only to reawaken bit by bit into the physical. So you forget, and then bam, you become conscious, and then you forget again, and then bit by bit you come back too. It's like being in a coma and then going, aha, I'm in a coma, and then falling asleep again and then gradually waking up. You can imagine your memory would be a bit, a bit hazy, to say the least. The strong flash of consciousness corresponds with the time of quickening. Quickening. So that's the very first part, the intro. Now it's going on to birth. Um, I might pause it here, because it's already been 13 minutes. But uh, the next parts are literally birth and babyhood and then through all the other levels of maturation. But that pretty much covers the, the essence and the idea of how we are here all to learn a lesson and to develop our, our soul in a higher self kind of way. The way I, I kind of view it, corresponding with this view and also corresponding with views I've seen propagated in, from many other sources, and in that book I was talking about, Journey of Souls, life seems like a video game. You know, if you have a PlayStation or an Xbox, you know, I'm a PlayStation guy, so I'll use that reference. You have a user profile, right? For me, it's bitch cunt. That's, that's my gaming alias, bitch cunt. Unless we're playing badass. Um, unless we're playing Borderlands, in which case I am badass bitch cunt, or badass bitch cunt supreme. But anyway, um, so that's my username. You know, that's my profile. And in a way, uh, that's kind of like your highest self, you know? 
Now, let's say we're playing Borderlands or any other game where you can log in into various characters. You can change using different characters, but they're all assigned to the same profile name. So, Bitch Cunt can be a Warlord, a Warrior, uh, you know, it can be a, a Wizard, you know, or a Banshee, or whatever character I want to play as. And in Borderlands, it lets you develop your statistics, because it's like an RPG, a roleplay game, where you can develop your statistics uh, of your being um, until you're pretty much maxed out, you know? And you can keep playing the game several times over. You can keep loading in as different characters, starting from the beginning of the game, finishing all the way to the end. And each time you finish and restart with a different character, as long as you're logged in with the same username, it still saves all of the information previous, all of the development of statistics and uh, your attributes. And it's, it's passed on into the next character you use. So too do I view that life is kind of like this, that, you know, there's a higher self profile username that is able to drop into different games, different live times, as different characters, and all of the lessons learned, and all of the experiences gained, are saved to this higher self user profile. So, you know, if we die here, we don't really die, we just, we just drop into the game, we just drop out, and then we respawn as someone else, really. Um, and it's all about uh, developing those statistics and maxing them out, or in this case, balancing our statistics. And I don't know exactly what criteria justifies completion or co uh, com accomplishing, you know, finishing the game and transcending it, but it's all about balancing it out and in a way, I think it's like we came from the source, we came from this perfect light, perfect energy, and we'll cast down to lower forms of vibration. And I think the idea is to end up trying to attain perfection yet again and return to the source by going back up the tree of life, back through the zigzag strip and uh, being one once again with what we were after having experienced many lifetimes of life, you know, if, if God's looking for a way to experience the self, it would make sense that it needs to, you know, throw itself out there, outside of itself, and totally disconnect so that it forgot itself, because you can't really explore and understand yourself if you're already completely aware and you're already in there, you know. It's hard for a doctor, it's hard for a sick person to play doctor and diagnose himself of a sickness because you're always in there, you're always in the sickness. You can't actually step outside and be objective, look at your condition and then diagnose it accurately with much depth or understanding. I think the same goes, God can't ex understand itself from an inside, all-knowing kind of perspective, but it needs to get outside of itself, lose itself, and then bit by bit, objectively, from the outside world here, uh, come to identify itself inside and through everyone else and further develop a, a new understanding, a fresh understanding and a new connection, a fresh connection with God, which is always there. Everything is of God. But I think the forgetting part is necessary in order to experience it properly and remember and then to become one. And I think that's the point. Anyway, there's going to be more parts to this. I want to finish at least this whole section that talks about the different levels of incarnation and all the way to death. Uh, if you're interested, feel free to, to watch on. And right now, I'm just going to put a, a dog ear in my book here. I got this from like an op shop. Like, she gave it to me for free. It was three bucks, but she just gave it to me. She must have seen that I'm like an angel here to heal the world or some shit. You know what I'm saying? Here to fucking kill all these homies. Uh, so here's the contents page. So if you'd like me to read any of these specific contents, feel free. So there's living on the planet of energy. And you can pause this if you want to read. Uh, there's the human aura section, part two. Uh, psychodynamics in the human energy field and all the different stuff there. There's actually some interesting things there.
different psychological dispositions based on the kind of energy they have overall and the higher self highs. It's interesting. Um, okay, part four, perceptual tools of the healer. All the different sections there. Part five, spiritual healing. Part six, self-healing and the spiritual healer and all the different sections there. Uh, yeah, that's that. Um, list exercises. Oh, there's also a bunch of other stuff. I'll show you anyway. Here's some illustrations if you want to see pictures um, showing any information regarding this topic. There's the illustrations. Just pause it if you want to see what's there. All right. And there's also more, more illustrations, as you can see. Let's go up to the next part of the page. All right, and here is a list of exercises. So this is like the how-to in terms of exercises you can do to unlock the chakras, techniques for healing or meditation. It's all listed there. Um, and that's it. So that's this book right here. It's very interesting. There's the, the backing if you'd like to to read anything there. It's totally up to you. And yeah, like I said, if you'd like me to read any of the, or show any of the parts that you've just seen there, just post and uh, I'll do a segment on it and share it with you guys. Saves you doing the reading, makes life a lot easier. So uh, cheers for watching guys and I will catch you next time on Reading with Phoenix. Feel free to like, share, and subscribe, all that jazz, and check out some of my other stuff too, if you want. Take it easy, and catch you later.